I'm recording this video, two million people have already died from COVID-19 around the world. The families of those two million people are, are now dealing with grief. They're in the mourning period, right? And for some of them, they may not have even been able to say goodbye to their loved ones. And, um, you know, the pain and regret of that might be really unbearable or feel unbearable. For other people, grief and mourning, it's like a dull pain that just stays with them for a long time. I, I haven't lost anybody recently. Um, early in the pandemic, um, I, I know of someone who, who died from COVID. Um, I've recently had a friend lose her father. Um, I've had uh, another friend lose her husband suddenly. And I am in the active um, stage of, of kind of preparatory mourning or grief because my mother, who's 96, um, is, is in her last months. Um, she's still lucid and I can talk to her, but, uh, but she's dying. She had a stroke not that long ago and um, she's on hospice. So I, I know what some of you are going through. Um, I'm preparing to go through it um, in, in a, a much bigger way. Um, and, and I know that I'm gonna have some regrets that I can't get there to see her. I live in California, she's in, in New York. And um, I know that, you know, I, I can't get there to see her. And so I can't hold her hand. I can't um, talk to her as the end approaches. You know, damn pandemic, right? We, so many of us are in the same situation of not being able to be with our loved ones at the end. And then besides that, um, to have to go through this grief process, which, you know, I'm kind of anticipating but uh, many of you are in, in it actively. So I wanted to talk a little bit about grief and mourning and how to go through the process, not because I'm any expert on it, but because I'm thinking about it because I'm going to have to go through it here soon and uh, so many of you are going through it. So I thought that even though I'm no expert, I can at least share information. I have things that I know that might be helpful to you. Um, you know, there's, there, there are lots of ways to cope with the pain um, and the emotions that come up with grief. Um, and, you know, there's always the question of how long should you grieve um, or how long is it appropriate? Um, I'm going to say right off the bat that I know everyone's different and everyone's mourning process and grief process is going to be different and you're going to do it at your own pace and um, in your own time. That said, um, you know, how long is too long to grieve? Um, you don't want to rush it. On the other hand, you don't want to stay stuck in it. And you are going to know, and your friends and family are going to voice their concerns if you've been in the grief process too long. You definitely don't want to get stuck in it and not move on with life because that's not healthy. And your loved one, your deceased loved one wouldn't want that for you anyway. They wouldn't want you to not be happy and not to continue living. Um, you know, grief is only really problematic, I think, when you, you know, it becomes a problem when you don't give yourself enough time to grieve, um, or because then you, you feel the ramifications later, like, um, you know, it comes out sideways in anger and depression and overeating and alcoholism and unsupportive behaviors and reactions. Of course, on the other side of that, if you grieve too long, then you might end up staying home in bed um, or, you know, binge watching TV all the time and never really getting back to your normal life. And that's not okay either. So how long is long enough? You know, you're going to know. And if it goes too long, you will, um, I'm sure your friends and family will tell you. And if it's too short, you're going to feel it because it, the emotions will come out sideways or you'll get sick. So there's some standard advice um, that's given around grieving, um, such as, you know, acknowledging your pain, uh, accepting that grief can trigger other unexpected emotions, um, understanding that your process of grief is unique to you. Um, it, it's going to be different than anybody else's. Um, other recommendations are to seek support from your friends and family or a mental health professional if you need that. 
um, to take care of yourself physically. What happens for a lot of people is they're so wrapped up in their grief that they forget to exercise, to eat, to, they can't sleep, things like that. So you have to take care of yourself if you want to come through this grief process is, you know, more easily. Um, and recognize the difference between grief and depression because it's one thing to be sad, it's another to be depressed. And I'm no expert on depression. I mean, I am, I am a certified high performance coach and um, we talk about lots of emotions and feelings and mindsets in my inspired creator community where I do personal and spiritual growth, but I'm no ist of any kind. Um, no therapist, no psychologist, no whatever ist. So um, again, I'm not one to offer you, you know, advice on your specific situation, but the six, six, these six, six suggestions um, actually are, are good ones. And, um, you know, if you're mourning a loss and feeling grief, then consider those. Um, also, we know that there are stages to grief. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross taught us that we have five stages of grief. We have denial, meaning this can't be happening to me. So that's that, that emotional state and mental state of, you know, this just isn't happening to me. It can't be happening to me. Then there's anger. Um, you know, why is this happening to me? Who's to blame? And a lot of people get anger, angry when someone dies, especially if a spouse leaves them behind um, or, or passes on. Then there's the bargaining, you know, make this not happen to me and in return I'm going to do something. It's that kind of bargaining with God, right? If you, you know, if, if you make if you bring this person back to life, you know, I will forever be, um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll tithe every, every month I'll tithe for the rest of my life, something like that. Um, the fifth one is depression, and um, that's when you're too sad to do anything, and that's what you keep thinking and feeling is I'm too sad to do anything. And again, that's a natural stage. You just don't want to stay stuck in depression. So, you know, it's something to keep your eye out for because that's when you do potentially want to um, seek out a professional for help if you get stuck there. And the last is acceptance. Um, I'm at peace with what happened. And um, that's where we want to get to is I'm at peace with this. Um, I accept it. I, uh, I can go along with my life. I can feel joy again, right? Now, the thing about these five stages, the Elizabeth Kubler-Ross stages, is that um, not everybody goes through all of them. Some people don't go through them in that order. Uh, so again, it's all unique to you. Um, you, you. You may, you know, the way I'm looking at it is the more I know about grief and mourning now, the easier time I'll have uh, recognizing some of these stages and be able to hopefully move through them. Um, but again, there's no should, no typical way of moving through grief. Now, when I think about the mourning period, I often um, come right back to um, my Jewish roots. Um, you know, for all of us, when we experience grief, you know, when someone dies, we have this period of mourning. And again, different time period for each person. But in the Jewish tradition, um, what happens is after somebody dies, they, the family and friends sit shiva for a week and it's basically the mourners stay at home and receive guests guests who come to comfort them and after that week is over the mourners actually go back to work or their daily activities so the tradition says you have seven days to really deep dive into your grief and your emotions and to begin to grapple with what's happened after that comes a period that's called Shloshim, which is a 30-day mourning period that um, includes the Shiva period. But this is when um, you're still getting over the shock of death. Um, they say that if you're mourning a parent, it takes longer. They actually give you a year. But in those 30 days, you're, you're getting more acclimated to the person being gone. You're still feeling a lot of grief and, and um, you know, sadness and loss and you might be struggling and going through the phases and all those things but you still participate in life and i think that's the main thing here is that you, you you're asked to um, you're not told not to you know to stop grieving or to stop mourning but you're told to move on with life so you don't get stuck in the grief and i mention this tradition because i always think that um, it's kind as well as firm so 
it's kind because it allows for the grieving process, right? That initially, you know, for seven or 10 days, you're gonna really be, be in it. And then you're gonna move out of it into another phase where you're still mourning, but you're, you're active in life. So, um, you know, I think it's also firm that, that doesn't allow people to wallow in grief beyond some sort of a normal period. Um, and without that delineation between being in active mourning and getting on with life, moving on with life, it's easy to get stuck, stuck in grief. So I think you have to give yourself time to heal. Um, again, how long? Everyone's different. But you also have to life to re return to life as you knew it. Um, you know, before the death or as it is now um, at some point. Otherwise, your emotional, mental, and um, physical health are gonna be in jeopardy. Now, a big thing that I think about when it comes to mourning and grief is faith because many people really rely on their faith to get them through the grief process. No matter your religious affiliation, you, um, you know, if you are a spiritual person, you believe in God, that can lead to, lead to acceptance and healing after somebody dies. Um, you know, you may trust that everything's in God's hands or that a person's destiny is, is, you know, or a person's life is preordained, that there's destiny. You might believe in heaven or reincarnation, whatever that belief, that understanding of life and death may make it easier for you to move through the grief process. Um, often, you know, prayer provides comfort. Um, the same can be said of religious rituals like wakes and funerals and sitting shiva and um, uh, memorials, those sorts of things. Now, if you believe in life and death, life after death, which I do, um, you may find that it's easier to go through this mourning period because you know that um, the person's soul is gonna live on and that they're, you might even be able to access that, you know, be connected to their soul after they're gone. Um, I believe this, I believe that the soul is released from the physical body and um, that we, we can actually connect with our loved ones in different ways. Some people have more ability to do this than others. But knowing that gives me really great comfort right now. Um, if you don't share this belief, you know, think about, here are a few stories that I could tell you. Um, I have a best friend who died many years ago. He was very vivacious and he talked quickly and he was always super passionate and excited. And um, I one time met with a medium, a psychic slash medium, and she uh, did a reading for me and she said, there's somebody who keeps wanting to talk to you and he's super excited and he's talking super fast and, and just everything she told me about this, this soul that was speaking to her and that wanted to, to communicate with me and the things that she told me about him, I knew it was my friend, Bill. Um, the same with my father. Uh, I had a me did a, a reading with a medium and um, my father came to speak to me. And the things that were said and the way they were said convinced me that really this person had the ability to communicate from the other side with me, from people I knew. Now, my daughter had a vivid dream when her best friend committed suicide. She didn't know he'd committed suicide. And she had this vivid dream of him. Um, I won't go into all the details, but it was, it was a very detailed dream that she remembered. And uh, it was really about him asking her to take him to, to help him transition, to take uh, him to the point where he went to the other side, uh, beyond the veil and she couldn't go there with him. And super vivid and very powerful before she even knew that he'd, he'd passed away. Um, I have a neighbor whose husband died of cancer and she told me that she had started to journal and she, he would speak to her through, through her journaling. She was having conversations with him. Um, another one of my friends actually, we, we have a mutual friend who passed away about a year ago and uh, he communicates with her all the time, giving her amazing information, um, almost like being channeled. Uh, so I know for me that as my mother approaches her last days, that I will be able to commun communicate with her even from a distance, soul to soul. And, um, you know, I've already reached out to her energetically, and um, I know that I can, I can do that when she's gone. Um, 
if the essential aspect of a person, a soul, lives on after death, your relationship with the person changes because you're not in the physical realm together anymore, but you don't necessarily lose your connection with them. Now, one thing I want to stress is not to stuff your emotions. And this is something I'm telling myself as much as you because I tend to want to avoid feeling sadness and grief. Um, you know, even now I find myself avoiding feeling sad, if at all possible, when I think about my mom or I've talked to her on the phone. Um, and, you know, and, and it may be the same for, for you, but that's not, it's not healthy to stuff our emotions. They are going to come out sideways. Um, so I'm working very hard to allow myself to feel sad and to um, do the kind of pre-death grieving that happens when, when, like, when somebody's in the ICU and you, you know, if they in COVID, have COVID in their ICU and you can't, um, you know that death is imminent, then you're, you're already grieving. If you have, have a friend or family member with cancer and you know they're dying, you go through the grieving process um, before they die. You get to prepare, whereas like my friend whose husband died, um, died very suddenly, she didn't get to prepare. So that can be a quite different experience, right? So give yourself permission to, to feel, to go through the grieving process, to do whatever you need to do for yourself. <clears throat> One of the things that, that you also talk about in Judaism is that memories are, are for blessing. Um, or are a blessing. I usually say somebody's memory will bless you, but it also, we're told, blesses them. So see memories as a good thing, a chance to remember, to rejoice in the relationship. Um, <clears throat> you know, that's what you do at a memorial service. You, you tell these stories with tenderness, with fondness, and allow yourself to feel the joy of the relationship. Um, even though it can't continue on the physical plane, you can still have these memories. And every time you remember the person, it blesses you and it blesses them. Um, also know that you, um, I wrote a blog post not long ago about how you can feel happy even when other people aren't happy. <clears throat> and know that it's okay to feel joy, uh, you know, or to feel happy um, while you're experiencing grief. They can go hand in hand. And um, this friend of mine whose husband suddenly died, she's one of the happiest people I know. And um, I saw her just a day or two after um, his death and she was holding her grandchild and she was smiling and I could feel through the picture her her joy and her happiness being with her grandchild and and you know she, she has said she spent time over the holidays with her family playing games and she was happy but she said also I am supremely sad a lot you know a lot of the time so you're going to feel sad, I'm going to feel sad, but we can also feel joy and it's okay. It doesn't honor or respect the person who died by us, um, you know, or keep their memory alive by, by us being sad for prolonged periods. Um, it doesn't, um, yeah, it really doesn't help keep their memory alive by being profoundly unhappy. Um, your, your loved one or friend who has transitioned wouldn't want that from you. They'd want you to be happy and to go on living. So last, I would say, be easy with the process. Um, this is the advice I want to give to myself too, is to be kind. Be kind to yourself and don't condemn yourself for pe feeling sad or crying. Don't berate yourself for finding it challenging to do daily tasks. Allow yourself to stay in bed if you think you must, um, you know, if that's what you have to do, or to opt out of commitments for a time. Just be easy with the process of grief and mourning. And, um, you know, feel, Feel, feel the gift that it is that you had the relationship with this person. It was a gift to you and you want to honor that gift. And um, you know, if you're in a really large amount of pain, know that, that the, the more love there was in that relationship, the more pain you're probably gonna experience during grief. Um, that grief will be harder to, to, to deal with. It'll be a stronger emotion. But I would suggest, and this again, that's advice I'm giving myself too, is to not focus on the pain and instead focus on celebrating the love that you shared with this person. Transpa transform that pain into gratitude, since it's a reminder of that love. 
and I would tell you that you're stronger than you know. You can uh, and will find ways to deal with death and grief and to mourn. You're going to heal and you'll be happy again and you're going to find a way to live fully. And, and know that you're not alone. There are so many people right now, two million people who've lost somebody, right? More than two million because two million have died. So family members, way more than that, right? Maybe even double. And so know that you're not alone and that you can get through this. You can, you can. And I'm with you and I feel you. And uh, this is a normal part of life. We all have to learn how to, to, to accept and deal with death and to go through the process of grief and mourning. So when you know that it's a normal thing, it's just part of life, it makes it just a tad easier. But knowing that you're not alone and being reassured that you're strong and you can do this, I hope that helps. I am Nina Amir, I'm the Inspiration to Creation Coach. I am a certified high performance coach and I uh, offer personal and spiritual growth through my Inspired Creator Community Program. Uh, I love to help people get from where they are to where they wanna go uh, without letting anything get in the way. I, uh, I know that for me, part of my journey has been to step into my best self, to live authentically, to uh, fulfill my purpose, um, achieve my potential, and make a difference to live a life that really feeds my soul and that contributes. So if that's something that's of interest to you, then please do check out my Inspired Creator community or reach out to me for a uh, one hour or 90 minute or so uh, strategy session, high performance coaching strategy session, if you'd rather work one-on-one. -on -one. But I highly recommend you check out the Inspired Creator community or go read my blog or watch my videos, subscribe to my YouTube station, and leave me a comment. Let me know uh, what you thought of this video and of my other ones. Um, I would love to hear from you. So that is it for today. And until I talk to you again, go out there and achieve more inspired results. Mm -hmm.